What's going on creative people? Welcome back to another episode of Minecraft Pocket Science. Now today, hot on the heels of the SpaceX launch which sent astronauts to the ISS, we are going to be looking at how to make a rocket that can take off, dock with a space station and have the player feel completely weightless and gravity free at zero G. Now if you haven't already, do take a look at our video How to Make a Working Rocket Engine which explains how the sound of the rocket can be created as well as the thrust of the rocket engines. In this video we're going to be looking at how to make the rocket move. Now before we launch our rocket, we're going to take a quick look at the facility where we put together the pieces for this rocket and tested it out. So, without further ado, let's take a look. So the first component is the engine here. This is what we reviewed in the how to make a working rocket video. So this engine actually works. It spits fire out the bottom and it makes a loud sound. We also have some redstone components which we will break down in detail later. And here we have the personnel capsule. So this is just a prototype for the top section of the rocket. This is where people will hang out inside. We're going to take a look at that in the actual rocket in a second. So let's go to the launch pad and prepare for our ascent. Alright, so here we are on the launch pad. Now you can see the rocket is sitting nicely on top of these struts here, which are actually pistons that are supported by redstone from underneath. The rocket has engines made of dispensers. This is discussed in the video How to Make a Working Rocket that we uploaded a couple of months ago. And it is connected to this big tower, so let's quickly go to the top. And here we are. Now we are going to launch this rocket when it is nighttime, so that we get the full color effect of the engine soaring as well as the stars in the sky. Let's board the rocket and take a look at the instrumentation real quick. So here are some switches that will control the doors. Once you press the switch, it's going to seal the door for good, which means you can't open it again. You have to launch the rocket. So the way that this works is that the switch will activate this command block and the command block has a simple fill command which is ordering Minecraft to put an iron block on the following coordinates which I've entered in. So you need to put the first set of coordinates which is 1010, 102, 4218 and then the second set of coordinates so that it knows exactly how much iron block you want to fill in the world. And as you can see it would just be two blocks filled into this doorway. So we're going to press that in a bit. Let's quickly climb downstairs and see what's in the first engine room. Down here we have a variety of different command blocks that will do different things. So again we have some fill commands. There's a lot of fill commands going on here so we're only going to touch on what's absolutely necessary for you to build a rocket like this. And if you were to go into the full engine room it becomes a little bit mind-boggling. Lots and lots of command blocks that are doing different things both visually and in terms of movement to make this rocket work. Let's go upstairs and we're going to take a look at the actual shuttle where the astronauts buckle in and fly to our space station. So as you can see it says activate lever then push button. That is going to be the launch sequence for this rocket. So if you're strapped into this rocket and you press those buttons you are going into space. Minecraft space that is which is 260 blocks high. Not very impressive really. Alright, we are now ready for the launch sequence to be initiated. So we're going to launch this rocket and then what we are going to do is observe it from the outside first to see how it takes off and then eventually docks with the space station above it. After that, we're going to do a second perspective where we go inside the rocket, press the takeoff sequence and then experience what it's like to be inside the rocket and arrive at the space station from the inside of the shuttle. Here's our elevator. And we are ready to board. Alright, we are now in the crew capsule and we are ready to initiate takeoff. Now there is a headphone warning here, um, even a speaker warning. The rocket engine is quite loud so make sure that your volume is turned down before we launch this rocket and fly into space. Please be ready. We're going to start in 5, 4, 3, 2,
All right, so by the looks of it, we have arrived in space. Now the easiest way to tell that we are in space is by jumping. There's the slow falling effect and there is the slow movement effect. This all contributes to making it feel like we are in space. So let's get off of this capsule and board the space station. Here we have an airlock. The rocket is designed to fly straight up so that it lines up with the airlock of the space station far above it. This has to be exact so that the two of them can have a entrance point like this. So as we have approached the airlock, we can hear the sound of the space station. There are lots of electronics on the space station. So to make it sound like the space station is alive and kicking, I have created an effect command in a command block on top of the space station. So let's press the airlock button and see what happens. Currently this is open and this is closed, but if we hit the airlock button, we can see artificial gravity has been disabled and the spacecraft is now cut off. And we can now go on board because it is safe to do so. So we're going to float in here and you can see, you can look outside and you can see the sea of stars. The rocket ship is just docked on that side over there and we're going to fly on board of the space station. Our feet are not touching the ground. And here we are. The first thing that we can do is to activate artificial gravity. So that is going to work like this. We hit the lever and our character slowly begins to descend. And now we can run around, but we are still in reduced gravity. As you can see, the jumping effect is very different in this kind of gravity than it was before. And if we walk to this window, we can actually see the upper stage of our rocket, which is docked over there. The lower stage would have been dropped off, so it's no longer around. Over here we have some special pods. There's a spacewalk, which will be happening up above, and some cruise quarters, which are zoned off here privately. Now if we climb upstairs here, we come to a different portion. We can again choose whether we want artificial gravity on or off, but it is recommended if you step outside that artificial gravity is on, because otherwise you will float into space forever and ever. Here we have another airlock. So when we step outside, there is no sound in space, so we're going to experience complete soundless scapes. So we're going to open the airlock, and we're going to run outside. So we are now doing a spacewalk. And everything that we do is just a little bit more amplified. You can jump really high when you're out in space. We're going to try and climb over here. And these solar panels, ideally we don't want to fall off because it's going to take us right back down to the surface of the planet. And that will not be a pleasant fall. If we want, we can walk over to the rocket, which has docked. And as you can see, the blinking lights are showing that the rocket is very much fully functioning and ready to take us back if we need to go back. There's our initial airlock where we walked in. This is the corridor where we came across. And we can go back inside. We're going to close the airlock and the sound will return. We are now going to take a deep dive into how all of these systems work so that you could replicate it by yourself. We're going to start off with the rocket component. We're going to take a look at the rocket component that makes the rocket move upwards and then we're going to take a look at how the docking procedure works and how the space station works with its zero gravity and with its sound effects. So as you can see the rocket is no longer here. It is now docked far above us. Um, ideally you can't see it because it's all the way out of vision range. If you have really good render settings on your computer, you might still be able to see a uh, space station in the distance, but that's because the height limit in Minecraft is 260 something blocks, so it's something that you can't really avoid unless you've got mods. I am playing on a phone, so I don't have any mods, but you can still do a whole bunch of stuff without mods. So, first thing we need to do is, let's get another rocket, because once we fired our rocket, we don't just want to lose it forever and have to rebuild it all over again. So to do, to do that, the best thing to do is build a fail-safe rocket. You want to have another rocket with all of the specifications and all the same exact pieces 
and you want to make sure that you can copy it onto this launch pad whenever you want to shoot the rocket into space. So I have placed my backup rocket down here in this big bunker underneath the landing platform. This is the exact rocket that you saw take off. So all I do is I hit this switch here, which is a clone function. And this clone function has got the coordinates, the exact coordinates to place the rocket on the landing pad above so that we can have another go at flying it into the atmosphere. So we're going to hit the clone button and our rocket should now be on the launch pad above us. Let's take a look. As you can see, we have successfully cloned the rocket onto the strut where it stands and it is ready for takeoff yet again. So if you did want to know how the engine works down below, um, you should check out the video that we put up a couple of months ago that's called how to make a working rocket engine. That describes to you how you can make an engine that creates noise, which is really loud and powerful, and also shoots fireworks out of the bottom of these dispensers. So go ahead and click on that video if you haven't seen it yet. What we're going to look at today is how it moves upwards. So the way that this rocket flies up is a simple function which was used in the how to build a moving ship video that we put up a few months ago. So this rocket is actually a little bit less complicated than the ship that we built because you don't have four directions which it can move to. It just goes up. So it's pretty simple code. What you have to do is you need to place a command block right at the top of your rocket, right at the tip. And you need to enter this function here. So it is a clone function that consistently copies the ship one block higher up and deletes the previous version of itself so that it looks like the whole ship is moving up one block at a time. Depending on how fast your device is, this might lag a little bit, or if you're on a very fast computer, it might not lag at all. It'll just, it will just shoot off into space and be at its destination very quickly. Do feel free to copy this exact code. You do have to keep in mind how tall your rocket is. As you can see, I am using the number minus 43 and minus 42 in this function. Make sure that you can spot that number. That number is representative of how tall my rocket is. So my rocket should be around 42 blocks high. So I am asking the program to copy 42 to 43 blocks of what's below this point up one. And that allows me to have this upwards movement. So ideally make your rocket about the same height as mine because that will mean you don't have to rewrite the code. If you do want to make it a different size, just mess around with those coordinates a little bit. The minus three, one, minus three, three coordinates don't really have to change much because it's only moving in the up direction. So make sure that if your rocket is a different height, you change the minus 43, minus 42 values to something else. Let's say it's 30 blocks high, you wanna have something like minus 30 and minus 29. Alrighty, so that is the simple clone function. Now, you do want to have a repeating circuit over the top here. So what's happening is that when redstone powers itself from inside the command capsule, where the person, when redstone is powered from inside the command capsule, where the user is and presses the button, the current is going to go through here and rotate in cycles. And it's going to keep rotating all around and around and around. Every time that it comes up to this block, it touches our command block and it will make it move up by one. And this is going to keep repeating all the way up until you hit the space station far above. Alright, so you want to make sure that the redstone is going down into a block and connected to a switch. In my case, the switch is right here. So this button up here will make the redstone repeat itself over and over on the very tip of this spacecraft. The lever down below is actually just for sound effects and for the engine roar. So when you press it, the engine roars to life and you also activate all of the fireworks that make it look fascinating and make it look awesome as it takes off. Now that we have covered the movement aspect, when it comes to building a space station, you want to make sure that your docking point is exactly lined up with where the door is on this spacecraft. See, in this case, I would come exactly to the point on the space station where I enter so that has to be exactly in line. When you build it, make sure you don't make a mistake with this lining up. That way the rocket can dock with the space station. This rocket will keep flying up until it reaches the ceiling of the world. Usually this is around 260 something blocks. So go double check where your ceiling is, make sure your door lines up with where your rocket door is going to be by the time it hits that ceiling. 
let's take a little bit of a closer look at how the space station above it works. There are a few main functions that we need to be aware of when it comes to how to build this space station. So the first thing you want to do when you build it is design something that you like. I've just used kind of a very basic space station look. It doesn't look exactly like the International Space Station, but that's because I like to be creative and come up with my own design. So I've just built something with some solar panels and some expandable um, areas here. As you can see, there's just areas that you can keep building and stretching out. And if I wanted to expand this further, I could. Now when it comes to the effects on board of the space station, there's only a few things that you want to do to make sure that you have zero gravity and make sure that it feels a little bit more immersive and realistic. So the first thing I've done is build an airlock. Now the airlock usually in real life will have multiple doors to prevent any air from escaping the space station and preventing a massive blowout like in the movie Interstellar, which you may have seen or may not have seen. So our door system is pretty simple. I'm using these buttons here open one side and close the other and when I press this one it closes this side and opens the other so the way that this works is that when you press the button it will touch the command block and the command block has a fill function which is ordering the coordinates behind me for this door to be filled with iron blocks so I've just taken the coordinates in the top left of the screen and I've entered them it's two squares that need to be filled with an iron block, so I've just entered those coordinates in the top um, and then I've added iron underscore block to make sure that it fills it with the iron that I want and not something else. So this side is filled with iron and this side is filled with air. Now as you can see, the other command block that is bordering this button is telling us to fill the space in front of me with air. That's why it looks like it's opening when I press this button here open so it's just filling with air that's all that's happening now the other side is exactly the opposite it's telling the space behind me to fill with air and the space in front of me to fill with iron blocks those are the two command blocks that are touching over here now the other thing that I've got going on is underneath this pressure plate I've got a command which makes it midnight when I step on this space station that's because you want to make sure that when you look outside you can see stars and the moon. You don't want to be able to see the usual blue sky that you would see on Earth. So I've placed these command blocks all around the floor of the space station so that you never have daytime. Now for this to be working you need to have your cheats set to on. So you can't have achievements but because you can build lots of cool stuff it makes it worth it. So the pressure plate makes the time set to midnight when someone steps on board. We're just going to float into the space station here and take a little bit more of a look at the functionalities. So there is a sound effect that is happening. So as you can hear, there is a faint hum that is going on in the background. This is to make it feel like you're surrounded by electronics and by life support systems. So the thing that is creating this ambient background noise is these command blocks that are set to repeat forever. So, as you can see down here, in the center of the space station, there is a red command block, and when I click on it, it has a play sound command. So, the play sound that I'm using is the beacon sound from the game. And I'm getting this sound to repeat itself over and over, unconditionally, and it's always on. It's always active. Anyone within a 30 block radius can hear the sound. The next thing that we're going to look at is how we can make ourselves float in zero gravity on the space station. As you can see, we're floating around and artificial gravity is not on. So, let's have a look at the effect systems that make this work. So, the way that artificial gravity is working at the moment is it is switched off and that's why we are floating. So, there is a redstone block which is powering this red command block and as you can see it needs the redstone block for it to work. It is repeating and the effect that I've chosen for it is levitation. So anyone in the radius of 100 blocks will start to levitate when this is active. And that's why we are currently floating. That makes it feel like we're in zero gravity. Now if we want it to be so that you can switch artificial gravity on, and then you fall down or you can start walking, this is what's going to happen. You see the redstone block has disappeared and we start to sink. And now we can jump a little bit higher than usual 
but we are stuck to the ground, and that's our artificial gravity. The way that this system works is pretty simple. Once the redstone block here has disappeared, this redstone command block is no longer active and you will not float anymore. It also sends a signal down this redstone line under, underneath this platform to create two more effects. So when the levitation effect switches off, the two effects that come into power are the jump boost effect for anyone within a 60 block radius. Jump boost means that you can jump a little bit higher. And finally, the slow falling effect. So when you've jumped, you will fall slowly. But you're still going to be stuck to the ground, which makes it feel like you are in space, but you are jumping a little bit higher than you would usually. Um, so these two blocks are currently powered. So as you can see, they repeat, but they need redstone to work. And if you were to hit the switch again, to disengage artificial gravity, you could see the torch would switch off because the redstone block will appear right here. Now the torch is off and you are floating again because this block of levitation is reactivated. And there we go. So now we're floating around the space station. We can even float up to the second floor if we want to. And that is how the gravity system and the sound effects work on this space station. So we are going to take a look at what it's like to step into the capsule and wait inside it until you arrive at the space station. So that is a different set of functions that we need to keep in mind because it is going to be because it is going to require some teleportation commands. Now, instead of activating this engine and flying out to look at it from the outside, let's try and pretend we're an astronaut that's activating the engine and then arrive at our destination shortly afterwards. So we are going to activate this rocket and then we're going to launch ourselves to the space station. Now the way that this is going to work is through teleportation functions. So all I've done is create the illusion that the astronaut is going to space inside this capsule. What's really happening is that when you hit this button, there is a teleport block down below here. That's going to take you to a replica interior, an exact copy of the inside of this little capsule somewhere on your map. So it just teleports you there, makes you feel like you're on board a ship, and it keeps you in there for a little while until you can get teleported when the rocket arrives and you teleport back into the capsule far above so that it feels like you never left it. But in fact, you are getting moved around. So let's give this a go. We are now sitting in another capsule on top of a pressure plate and a command block that's gonna teleport us in about 50 seconds when the rocket has arrived and docked with the space station. So this command block is set to teleport us, anyone in the radius of 20 blocks to the destination coordinates of where the space station would be. And here we are, we have arrived. As you can see, we are now floating. And there shouldn't really be a hole in the side of the spacecraft, so we're just gonna block it up real quick. So that concludes how you can get up into space. Make it look like you've never left the capsule. And eventually, your astronaut will be in the right spot and ready to board the space station once again. And that concludes our video on how to build a working rocket that flies into space docks with a space station that has zero gravity and can be fully explored by an astronaut. Thank you so much for watching Minecraft Pocket Science and we look forward to seeing what you will create.